Our praise is our God. His name is above, above all names. And he is worthy, worthy of all praise. We do say happy birthday to all of those who have a birthday in July. I forgot to mention the birthday, so we say happy birthday for all who are celebrating in July. But that's what we want to let you know today is that our God is great. Yeah. How great yeah. is our yeah. God. Yeah. Let us pray. Uh, merciful God, our Father, we come now yeah. for the opportunity to share uh, your word to your people. Yeah. Yeah. Hide your man servant now, God, behind the sacred desk. Oh God, let my imperfection, let nothing that I am doing distract them from hearing and receiving your word. Amen. Thank you now, God, for giving me this chance to return back to your place mm. one more time. To yeah. stand and to declare uh, the righteousness of God. Mm. To declare the holiness of God. To declare yeah. Yeah. that every knee shall bow. That every tongue shall confess. Yeah. Keep me now strong, God, that I may not... Uh, fall away from your word that I, whatever I share will be clearly evidenced in the Bible that one can find it, God. Yes. Thank you now, God, for using me one more time yes. for these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name yes. and we pray in mind. Yes. We say good morning to our Facebook and our YouTube family. So again, glad to be back in the pulpit here at Beulah. Glad to have you with us on this morning. Yes. Our scripture for today's text is coming from the book of John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. And I'm using the easy reading version this morning for our translation. Again, the book of John, the gospel of John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. And I ask you that when you found it, that you will uh, take note of standing to give God word reverence uh, for his place. Again, we're using the easy reading version, the easy reading version. John, the fifth chapter, verses one through 11. And again, so glad to see more of you out to worship Amen. on this Lord's day, amen. The Bible says later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a special Jewish festival. Mm -hmm. In Jerusalem, there is a pool with five covered porches. Mm -hmm. In Aramaic, it is called Bethesda. Mm -hmm. The pool is near the Sheep Gate. Many, many sick people were lying on the porches beside the pool. Some of them were blind. Some were uh, were crippled and some were paralyzed. In other words, somebody needed some help. Yeah. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been sick for a very long time. Y'all, 38 years is a long time. So he asked him, do you want to be well? What a question. The sick man answered, Sir, there is no one to help me get into the water when it starts moving. In other words, when the angel stirred the water, he got to step in. But he said, no one to help him. He says, I tried to be the first one into the water. But when I try, someone else always goes in before I can. Then Jesus said, Stand up, Jesus said, we're going to fix this water thing. Stand up. Pick up your mat. Your a translation said, pick up your bed and walk. The day all this happened was a Sabbath day. Oh my God, I'm talking about Sunday. So some Jews said to the man, who had been healed. Today is the Sabbath, and it is against our law. Uh, it didn't say that it was against Jesus, but it was against our law uh, for you to carry your mat on the Sabbath day. Yeah. But look at what the man replied. But he 
answered. He said, the man that was healed said, the man who made me well told me, pick up your mat and walk. Beloved, as you take your seats, our key verses that we are going to concentrate on this morning is verses 7, uh, and it says this, the sick man answers, sir, there is no one to help me get into the water when it starts moving. I try to, but the first one into the water, to be the first one into the water, but when I try, someone else always goes in before I can. Just for a few minutes, I'd like to preach from this thought. He kept coming back. All right, all right, all right. He kept coming back. Every day that we wake up, we are a faith with making choices. No matter how we feel, no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter what happened to us on yesterday or whatever even happening to us now, we are faced with making choices. Yeah. No matter what has happened all last month or last year, we still need to make choices. Yeah. Uh, you get up early this morning and you had to make a choice. Am I going to sleep in late because it's a holiday? Or will I put my best on and go to worship? Oh, I'm so glad to know today that some of you decided that I made a choice. And that was that it's the Lord's day and I need to be in the house of the Lord. As Christians, our choices that we make will have a great impact on how our lives will turn out. All of us can look back and say to ourselves, you know, that that, that was a good choice. Uh -huh. But all of us can say too, I ain't going to ever do that again. Yeah. Oh, all of us have made some choices. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And so, beloved, we, we need to take the choices that we make more seriously because not only do they impact or affect our lives, but so many others are affected by our choices as well. Oh, Christians, you're not making a choice just for you. There's always somebody attached to you. For I saw a post on Facebook this morning and it got a lot of attention uh, this week for there was a lady who had three children and uh, she had three from three different baby daddies and, and the one father though would come every morning and bring his child a meal but he wouldn't bring the other kids anything but he brought his child a meal and she went on Facebook to blast them and said how dare you what a sorry father you are because you only brought one meal but the brother said I ain't the dad to all the rest of the kids he says, I just got this kid. I know you may have some opinion about that because I wouldn't want one child to eat and the other one are not eating. But you've got to go back to the mother. You had to make some choices. You made a choice to have three different baby daddies. Where's the other two that have these kids? You see, life comes with choices. I'm so thankful that my father made a choice to move from Mr. Charlie, I don't know his name, but I'm going to call him Mr. Charlie. He moved from Mr. Charlie's place when he was sharecropping because you know when you sharecrop, uh, they own the crop and they own a part of you. And they would tell my father, it's now harvest season. Where is the kids? They can't go to school. They got to get out of here and get in these fields and get this crop in. But my daddy made it clear that we were going to school. And so he decided to move from Mr. Charlie place and he bought 200 acres and a house. And, and because of my daddy made a great choice, uh, all of us have been inherited of 30 acres that we can now have as a family of children. And we all, four out of six, have a college degree because he made a choice. 
I told you your choice in life don't just affect you. It affects more than you. No wonder Yolanda Adam wrote this song. She says, I opened my heart. The lyrics expresses that she is deeply concerned about making, here it is, the right choice. She says in her song, alone in a room, it's just me and you. Lord, I feel so lost because I don't know what to do. Now, what if I choose the wrong thing to do? I'm so afraid, afraid of disappointing you. So I need to talk to you. I, I need to ask you for your guidance, especially today when my world seems so cloudy. Lord, God, until I'm sure I open up my heart to you. Is there anybody this morning who wants to open up their hearts to God? Well, I don't know about you, but I need to talk to him. I need some guidance. I need some direction in my life. Yeah. That's what I'm asking God to do for me. For in this crazy world that we're now experiencing, I, I need direction, y'all. Are, are you willing to ask the Lord for direction this morning? Yeah. I know I can't take a step without him in my life, so I'm saying, help me, Lord, to walk the right way. Help me, Lord, to talk the right way. Help me, Lord, to worship the right way. Help me, Lord, to make sure that I don't disappoint you. Are you willing to ask Jesus for help? Well, I make one. Can I get two? I, I, Lord, I need you. I, I can't do without you. I won't go any place where you're not at. Lord, I need some help from you. He kept coming back. Here in the background of this text, we find Jesus was attending a festival. Not sure which one it was, but he, we know that he was attending a festival. And while he was on his way, he came across a pool in Jerusalem called Bethesda. At this pool, it was not that there were there were noted that there were five porches surrounding it, and one could find all types of persons with infirmities or sickness, uh -huh. people needing help, and waiting for the angel to trouble the water. And when the water was troubled, uh -huh. it was known that the one who stepped in first got their blessing. Yeah. Can you imagine that five, 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 five pools all around this altar and, and they're just waiting for a sign, just waiting from heaven that the Lord will step in and, and, and touch the water. Can, can you just well, I see them anticipating that today I believe is going to be my day. Yeah. Uh, I've been dealing with this issue for a long time and nobody has helped me with it. And so I just believe that if I get to the place, uh, if I get to the house of God, uh, if I get to just to be able to lay my hands on his altar, I just believe that things are going to turn around for me. Oh my God, oh my God. I, I wish that we would have a revival of folk were just wanting to be in his house. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a day I, I saw on Facebook that said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we would return uh, to yesteryear? Yeah. What they were saying was not going backwards in time, but go back to the point where we care about coming to the house of God. Uh, 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 we, 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 we had a, a little uh, rag in the church when we first started out and if you didn't get there early, you got the worst seats. What's the worst seat? The seats that was in the back that you couldn't hardly hear what the pastor was saying because they didn't have no mics. Uh, but, but people wanted to get them to worship. Never forget that we had some classmates, uh, uh, Pastor Wise, Dr. Wise now. My mama at times would pick them up. They would be walking early to church. 
oh, I know we don't want to do that. We won't even uh, uh, let somebody pick us up. Not only talking about catch the bus, we got some folks coming with empty cars. And folk, if you ask them, said, I'll stop by. No, baby, I'm all right. I'm just going to wait till it's come up on YouTube or Facebook. No, no. You need to have your faith in the place. For you recognize, they recognize that, that, that this pool of Bethesda was a significant place. And so they said that I've got to get to the house. Now, Jesus came across a man who had been sick for 38 long years. And he had been coming to the pool, but yet have not received what he came for. He was in the house, but he didn't get what he came for. Oh, I can tell you this, sometimes uh, it's important though to get to the house, but you can get to the house and miss not getting what you came for. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can be focused on the wrong things. Uh, uh, matter of fact, if I came for 38 years, and we ain't going to preach this, but that's another stage. But if I was coming for 38 years, you know I have my toe just right there? Yeah. Right there, right there, right there. I said, okay, the angel, I'm going to this whoop. I got my toe in. I'm first, I'm first. 38 long years. Yeah. He came, but he didn't get what he came for. Uh, but, but, look, uh, but I'm not beating up on this man today because I'm glad that he kept on coming back. There's something to be said about keep on coming. Keep on coming. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I know you got your mask on, but turn to your neighbor uh, that's on your right side and say, keep coming back to the church. Oh, uh, that neighbor didn't get excited about the church. Turn to somebody else and say, keep coming back, keep coming back. to the church. For there's power, there's deliverance, there's healing in the church. Oh, there's some folk in my day that no matter how sick they was, they said, if you can just get me in the wheelchair, I'm coming. Now we got folk, ain't nothing wrong with them. And they won't come. He kept coming back. And so, beloved, as I hurry on, I, I, I got three things. I wanted to know why this man kept on coming back. 38 years, or 37 and a half, and what he came for, he had yet to receive. But he kept on coming, Deacon Brown. What made this man keep coming? Yeah. Well, let me answer that question with these three points. Here, here's my first point in the text. What kept this man to keep coming back year after year after year? Here it is. He recognized the place where power resides. He recognized the place where power resides. He recognized that. You know what? Everywhere else I go, there was nothing that looked promising, but I recognize that when I come to this place, Bethesda, there's some power here. When Moses reached the place where the burning bush that was burning but was never consumed, the voice of God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Uh, in other words, uh, there's some power in this place. Yeah. Beloved, I'm so glad uh, now that it has been one year that God has allowed us to be back in his house. Yeah. Don't you know, it was one year ago, 2021, that God allowed us to come on back in here and sit in these cushion pews and have the air condition and the sound system one year ago that brothers and sisters could come back into his house. Yeah. This holy place where the power of his presence resides. 
For God told his disciples, if you want to do great ministry, you must wait in the upper room until the Holy Ghost comes and give you power from on high. Aren't you glad that when you step into this place, I'm talking about the house of God, this morning, you knew that you were in the presence of God and uh, there would be some power in the house. I, I'm telling you right now, anytime you go to a house of God that's worthy to be called a house of God, there is some power uh, in the house. Uh, uh, for whatever you need, you know that there's power. Down, down south, we used to sing a song, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come. For I can't sing right until the Holy Ghost come. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Another mother would say, I can't walk right until the Holy Ghost come. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. And the congregation would join in and say, come on down, Lord. Come on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. And you see, we get together because we knew that if the Holy Ghost came down, the house would have power. I don't want to be in no Lord's house and there is no power. Uh, uh, for if I can just get to his altar, if I can just get into his presence, the Lord promised me here that he's got some power. Is there anybody this morning want to testify that you might have not felt your best, but when you got to his house, life began to change up. Problems that you had begin to fade away. The issues that you were stirred up with last night begin to become small because you got into the house and the Lord touched you and He said, Baby, you're going to have some peace. You're going to have some peace today. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, boy, if you can just get into the house, He recognized that there was some power in this place. And so he kept on coming back. Didn't get what he came for. But he recognized that what he came for was available if he kept coming. Oh, I wish some people would realize that the church wouldn't be so empty this morning if they would recognize that you might not get it today. But you just keep on coming. Uh, 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 we didn't get uh, delivered from where we have been as black folk, uh, but we kept on coming back to God. Uh, and we knew that one day we were not going to just be folk that people stepped on, but that God was going to raise us up and we were going to be able to do what our constitution said we ought to be able to do because we just kept on coming uh, back to God. Uh, this morning, excited this morning that, that you came back to God. He's decided that this place has some power. And so he kept on coming back to where the power is. So many folk miss blessings because Everybody think that if they can just lay hands on themselves uh, and get a prayer through a TV, they're fine. Don't you know God did not establish his place just to be established? But there was some purpose. For he said, forsake not assembling yourselves with brothers and sisters of the like faith. He said, because when we come... Uh, together. He said there'll be some power. Uh, and that power will be him and within you. Uh, uh, for what I am going through, you have already come out of. And, and you can testify and give me encouragement. Say, hold on brother. I've been through what you're going into. Uh, and I can tell you uh, what God did for me. Uh, I don't know how long your situation is going to last, but I do know it will end. Uh, 
And so what I want you to do is keep on giving God the praise. Yeah. And so that's why he said that when you come into his sanctuary, yeah. uh, you will find throughout the scripture when Jesus went to another town, they say he went into the synagogue. Yeah. For Jesus, even being the son of God, recognized that he would be weak in days and, and the way that he built himself up he went into the church beloved I'm telling you there's something special about this place uh, there is no other place better to be in when you're going through some issues in this place oh I know you think that there are some other places that will give you greater comfort you can be in Hawaii on a great vacation but if your mind is messed up, if you got trouble in your home, there's nothing better than this place, the church. And so for 38 long years, he recognized the place where power resides. Well, the second thing that I see in the text that he kept coming back was this. For 30.2, for 37 years that I have, he saw evidence of the Holy Ghost power performing miracles. Okay, yeah. For 37 and a half yeah. years, he saw evidence yeah. of the Holy Ghost yeah. power yeah. performing miracles. Yeah. It's in the text, verse 7 says, the sick man answered, sir, there is no one to help me get into the water. When it starts to move, Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm trying to be the first one, but he said that the, somebody always steps in before me. Yeah. In other words, uh, those who stepped in last year, they ain't here today. Because they got what they came for. Mm. Oh, I can help somebody right there. Uh, I don't know when your hour is. I don't know when your day will be. But if you keep on coming back, it's going to be your day. Yeah. For he said that, 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 that I have evidence that the Holy Ghost is working in this place. Yeah. Uh, when I was a young child, uh, my evidence that the Holy Ghost is working was based on what mama and daddy told me about Jesus. But, but, but beloved, uh, I'm so proud today for some 55 years now, i uh, I don't have to steal mama's testimony. I don't have to steal daddy's testimony. I have a testimony for myself. Uh, for when I needed help in school, uh, when I needed a place to stay during the summer, when I needed healing for my body, uh, when I needed finance for my family, uh, I don't have to ask mama, daddy, because I went to the master, and the master made a way for me. Is there anybody out here with me will testify that you have evidence, you have proof that the master has what it takes, that, that the master has what you need, and he has given you some of what you need. I'm thankful today that, that the Lord took care of me. I'm thankful today that the Lord made a way out of nowhere. I'm thankful today that I got an evidence. Uh, no hearsay. Hearsay is good. But I got evidence. Oh, I'm glad you can tell me about what he's done for you. Uh, but as soon as you finish your story, let me tell you what he's done for me. Uh, oh, I like your story. Uh, but I got a better one. Because your story ain't my story. Let me tell you how he blessed me. How he made a way for me. And so the man says, I, I, I haven't got what I came for. But I have seen for 37 and a half years uh -huh. that there's some evidence yeah. of power uh -huh. in this place. Yeah. You see, that's why I can't avoid this yeah. place. 
That's why I can't avoid his house. Because I've got some evidence yeah. that when I can get myself in his house, yeah. uh, that there's some miracles take place. Oh, I, I, I can just look uh, right here at the front row. I can look right here uh, in a few weeks ago, a month ago in an accident. I can look at Sister Hall talking about her mouth the other day and what the Lord has done. I, I can see a, a man having some issues uh, with his intestines and had to put a bag on the outside, but now all the outside has returned to the inside. I can tell you that I've seen some evidence in this place. And so, I can't stay away. I got to keep coming back to his house. Because there's power in his house. Well, let me close to say he kept coming back not only because he recognized the place where power resides, but for 37 and a half years he saw evidence of that power being performed. Well, the third thing that I want to share with you about this man at the pool of Bethesda, the third thing says he believed that he would find help or the help would find him. Don't miss that. He believed that he would find help or the help would find him. See, sometimes we make the mistake of because we got into the house, yeah. not always a mistake, I should not say that. We believe that just because I got our bodies around me, yeah. I'm going to get some help. Right. And, and it should be. When you get into his house, yeah. you shouldn't have to beg folks to help you. Yeah. But, but let me just caution you. Just because you're in his house yeah. doesn't mean that folk who are with you in his house is going to help you. Yeah. I told you the quickest help that people like to throw off on you is I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. That means they ain't about to do a doggone thing for you. Don't ask me for no money. Don't ask me for no ride. Don't ask me for no this or that because I'm just going to pray for you. Yeah. So I ain't obligated to do much. Uh, but, but, but he said I kept coming back because I believed that I could find help but if I didn't get any help, Deacon Brown, help would find me. Yeah. Oh, I shouted on that. When I, when I saw that, he said that I, I, I'm in the right place. Right place. Yes, sir. But I haven't got no help for 37 long years. But I believe if I just keep on coming, if I just keep pressing my way. For he said here in verse 7, the sick man answered, Sir, there is no one to help me. I need to help y'all. There is no one to help me to get into the water. Jesus said, that's your problem. That's your problem. Uh, you counted on church folk too much. Uh, for you got to the house uh, where they said they had a benevolent fund, but ain't no benevolent about them. Uh, you've been suffering for over months and months. And nobody has given you anything from the benevolent board. You have been serving in the church, working in ministry, doing what God has told you. And they say that with their arms folded, like they don't see you going through what you're going through. But Jesus said, that's all right, that's all right. The man kept on coming. He said, well, if I can't get help from the helpers, then the help has to find me. It's in the text. It's in the text. He says, he says, sir, there is no one to help me get into the water when it is stirred. I tried to be the first one into the water. I need some help. But when I try, ah, uh, somebody who is not as bad as me steps in before me. But Jesus said, this is your day. This is your hour. For you were counting on the helpers. But they can't do what I can do for you. Because if the help don't find me, the help will come to me. And so here it is. Jesus said, stand up. Pick up your mat and walk. You see, but the man was confused. 
Because he was still counting on church for it. He says, I, I, that's not what I, I told you, Jesus. I said, I don't have nobody to put me into the water. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm bypassing all the church for yeah. I, I, I am the help who has found you. Yeah. I moved you from waiting to the water is third, and you get to get to the water. I'm going to heal you right now. Right now. Right now. Verse 9 said, what? Immediately. There's nothing greater than a meeting. Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Jesus said, you've been counting on church folk when you should have been counting on me. Oh, that's why I'm so glad today, beloved. Oh, I do love my church folk. I'm, I'm going to keep coming to the church because I want to be with the saints of God. I, I want to be with the even the sinners of God. Oh, that's all of us. But, but, but beloved, don't get it twisted. My, my focus uh, isn't on you. Uh, isn't on you. Uh, but my focus uh, is on the almighty God. Uh, so when folk walk by me uh, and I act like they don't see me, uh, when folk don't call me when I'm sick, uh, when folk don't help me when I'm down in the finances, uh, I come uh, to the house of where Jesus is. Don't you know who built the house? Last week we were talking on a sermon about don't get it twisted. For when Moses thought that he was doing all that he could and how important he was, the scripture said don't get too focused on Moses because Moses didn't build the house. God said I Build a house. I am the Alpha and the Omega, and that's what I've come for. Oh, I'm gonna shout with you. I'm gonna dance with you. I'm gonna praise with you. But my focus is on heaven. My focus is on Jesus. My hope is on the Master. I love my brothers and my sisters, uh, but I'm focused. Uh, I'm praising uh, Jesus, my Savior, uh, for all to Him I give. Uh, for I surrender all. Uh, and beloved, uh, I want you to know today, uh, sooner or later, uh, God's going to turn it around. Uh, if you keep on coming back, uh, sooner or later, situation around may not be today may not be tomorrow may not be next month but you keep on coming back for 37 and a half years he kept on coming back and the Lord said today is your day the hour of the hour is now here for you rise pick up your bed and he walked, and he walked with what he was laying on. Because he kept coming back. Oh, I wish those of you out there in Facebook and YouTube would recognize how important it is to come back to the house of God. Oh, I appreciate that you listen and view the message yeah. in your convenience but that's for those who can't come yeah. those who are convalescent and have no way of getting here yeah. but if you're able by yeah. believers of Jesus yeah. it's time you too and Facebook it's time yeah. to come back yeah. to the house yeah. those of you who are in bedside Baptist you can't worship God like you can in his house. Oh, I know you said God is everywhere. Yes, he is, but he has designated some special places that the move of God is greater than any other place. And here at the pool of Bethesda, the Holy Spirit was moving and shaking. And beloved, wherever the Holy Spirit 
It's moving and shaking. Mm. That's where I want to be. Uh, Isaiah said, in the year that King of I died, yeah. I saw the Lord yeah. high yeah. and lifted up yeah. in his temple. Yeah. And his train filled the house. Yeah. And he said, the terrorists, uh, they hollered to one another because the God smoke of his presence was so heavy. Yeah. I just believe they couldn't see the ground. Uh, and so the only way they could acknowledge each other but to really praise God and just holler, Holy! 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 I can't see you, but I'm just going to holler, Holy! 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 It's the Lamb of God. God has filled this place so much that I don't need to see you because when I know he's done what he's done, I just shout, Holy! Holy! Holy is the Lamb of God. He kept coming back. The doors of the church is open, beloved.